Hey bears, it's Bear here. Many of you are landing on the Bear Meets Life YouTube channel because you want to know how to do a spiral Betty, so I thought I'd do a tutorial. I've been colouring in pictures with gel pens for quite a while from a Lion's Dots and Spirals colouring book, and it turns out there's this whole other craft world if you're going to make a spiral Betty, where you can actually cut out these spirals and then put those onto different backgrounds and different materials. And the other thing that people have been searching for on the YouTube channel was for pictures of Dylan O'Brien from Teen Wolf and Maze Runner, so I thought I'd use him as the example for this. Now normally when I'm colouring in a spirals picture I just use the book that I have so I invested in a adult colouring book last year. That's a lines, dots and spirals book so it's got a mixture of all three types of pictures. It's about 50-ish pages. I think I paid less than £10 for it on Amazon and obviously that means I always have something to colour in without really having to think about it. For the purposes of this I didn't have any pictures in advance of Dylan O'Brien from Team Wolf or Maze Runner. The Spiral Betty website has a few different uses. One is if you had a photo of your own that you wanted to turn into a Spiral Betty, obviously that's not going to be in a book that you buy. But also if you just had like a one-off picture that you wanted to turn into a Spiral Betty, maybe because you're not ready to buy like a whole book to do this and perhaps you're not planning to colour it in at all. But I will show you on the Spiral Betty website the different options you have. There's sort of three things that you could do at the end of this via the website. So one is that you could just have a coloured in spiral that you print and just cut around the outside and have that as your pretty picture or you can make it black and white and put that into canvas or whatever editor you're using and then put that on a cry cut cricket cry cut cricket whatever you call it you know the the cutter machines the computer control cutting machine is it a cricket or a cry cut i don't know because i don't own one but you can put them into one of those and then cut whatever a fabric you want like vinyl for mounting onto other things or the third option that you can also use the spiral betty website for which is what i would be most likely to use it for is just to create an outline spiral that you can colour in if you didn't have the picture that you wanted to colour in. So if you just go to spiralbetty.com it's very easy to use it tells you straight away what you need to do so just upload whatever image you're going to want to turn into your spiral it should upload fairly automatically for you and then you can reposition the picture so don't worry if your original picture wasn't it's a circle shape or wasn't like a square shape that a circle would fit neatly into you can shuffle the picture around a little bit. I try to choose sort of the highest resolution promotional picture I could find of Dylan O'Brien is very airbrushed picture actually I think not that he needs much airbrushing I'm sure but it doesn't quite look like a, a real photo anymore but anyway and they have a sliding scale so you can zoom in and out so the picture that I had chosen because he's actually kind of to one side of the the photo it means they're not in the the center of the spiral because you can't really shuffle it side to side but you can move around the picture if you want to move up and down or zoom in and out that's just something to be aware of like if you wanted to make a spiral out of a picture that you have where the main focus of the picture is maybe in one third of the picture off to one side you might want to crop that first on your computer and and then upload it so if you want that part of the image to actually be in the center of the spiral you click the tick when you've got the picture positioned how you want it and that turns that into a colored spiral image for you and on the right hand side of that you have all of the color options and all of the other things that you can do with this image with the image that you're already presented with you can reverse the colors or you can ignore that altogether you could just pick your color options and print that and mount it or there's a black and white option that's the one that you're most likely to use if you are going to be using this as a reference to then cut a spiral out of another material on a cutting machine then on the top right you want the option that says color in if you're just looking for the outline that's completely blank that you can then fill in the lines of the spiral and then the other thing that you can do is at the bottom you have these options that say rings scale lightness and contrast it's easiest to play with them with the color option selected and that will give you an idea in advance so for instance if I was going to create a picture to color it in I would want to play with these with one of the color options selected so that I can actually see what that would do to the final outline because one thing I have found about coloring in from a coloring book that you buy on Amazon of lines dots and spirals is that you can't always tell from the outline what the finished picture is going to be i know who it's going to be of because all of the pictures in the book don't ask why it would take too long to explain i don't want to say stuck because stuck's not the right word but i'm now coloring a lot of pictures of harry styles in my free time it's funny if you're me it's very clear often what pictures of harry styles that they used and other times it could be almost anything when you play with these settings in the Spiral Betty website, you will kind of understand why that is. Because if we go to rings, for instance, we use this slider underneath, you can see how you can make a picture incredibly detailed, or you can make it no longer look like a person or something somewhere in between. If we go to scale as well, again, if you didn't zoom in the way that you wanted to, 
beforehand when you were uploading the picture this is an opportunity to then zoom in on a, a single part of the picture so you could actually turn this into a spiral of just an eye or something like that that could be useful for if you were creating a piece of artwork where you're actually not that fussed about who or what appears in the image but you're trying to like focus in on on like a detail of a piece of image the lightness slider i don't find that useful so i don't really play with that i just kind of leave that where it is and then the contrast one the contrast one i really like but one thing to be aware of with that if you are going to cut this out on a machine afterwards so like a cutting machine would make the cuts for you but then usually you have to do something called weeding where you actually remove like the parts of the rings it's like a spiral inside a spiral if that makes sense and my understanding is that the bigger the picture the easier that process is and that you should be able to kind of like unwind it like a coil of rope almost whereas the smaller your picture is and the finer the rings are you might be there for quite a long time weeding it because if it's vinyl for instance you might find that each time you find the end of the vinyl and you peel it away that it keeps detaching so you're peeling away these tiny little strips when you really want to be able to weed the whole thing kind of in one go just for ease but I imagine also that avoids sort of damaging any other part of the spiral and if you're doing this to color it in then also if you select something that's incredibly high contrast then what that's going to do is create a very very dense spiral so one thing I have found through the process of coloring spirals from a coloring book is that some of the spirals have got a lot more rings than others or not a lot more rings because there's usually in, in the book that I have there's usually two spirals but there's sometimes a lot more to color in than another picture and that's not always obvious at the outset but here you'll be able to see like quite obviously that if you select the contrast option and the maximum number of rings that you're going to end up with a picture that's going to take quite a long time to color in if we're honest okay so that's that so once you've finished playing around with those options the flip side of that is that if you choose something that has less contrast and less rings it would be quicker to color in but you're just not gonna have as clear of an image when you finish so it depends on whether you're going for something impressionistic or whether you want kind of like a photorealistic spiral at the end personally i like being able to tell that it's a picture of a person and who the person is and then if you click the download symbol you're ready to then save that to your computer so you can do this for free providing you're not selling these images on afterwards there is an option to buy the website a coffee so to donate to the website basically which is a really nice idea because it is a free service to use and that will keep the website like going but also if you are doing this to then make artwork that you're selling or to make tutorials like this one then it's also just a nice idea to make sure that you donate to the website and support them as they support you if you click on the advanced options by the way and you click png instead of jpeg and you can tick clear background and that means that when you download it it will have already removed the background for you so if you were making a spiral betty with the idea of going to put this on a machine and cut it out on a machine and then weed it and mount it that skips the whole step you don't need to then put that image into a separate editor to remove the background you can actually do that on the website here and you save that to your computer and you're done to then do what you wish next which in my case would be to then color it in now if it is coloring that you're mainly interested in i was thinking about whether you could use this website instead of buying a coloring book and i think it really depends on what you want to be coloring whether you're doing that as like a one-off craft or if gel pen coloring I, I mean i use gel pens maybe you're using like prismacolor coloring pencils but if you are coloring on a really regular basis that's why i like to have a book because you really don't have to think about what you're going to color in next if i'm doing this as like a mindfulness activity and just to relax i want to make as few decisions as possible one of the reasons i really love that i discovered lines dots and spirals coloring books is because i couldn't get into adult coloring before that because it actually didn't seem relaxing that you would sit down and have so many color options when you color in a picture but with the lines dots and spirals coloring book quite often the point is to just color in one color sometimes into if you're going to do a background and that just removes a lot of the decision making so owning a lines dots and spirals coloring book both means that you don't have to think about what picture to color in next you only have to make a decision about what one color you want to use perhaps i think i mentioned at the start the book that i've got is around 50 pages obviously if you were going to print off that amount of pictures and be doing this really regularly like on a daily or weekly basis maybe that would use up a lot more paper and printer ink than is really economical for you versus buying a book which is less than 10 pound or less than 10 dollars not to mention putting the images into the website and trying to get them right and then having to print them and everything before you can even sit down to color but on the other hand if it's just one picture that you want to have as a spiral you don't want a book where all of the pictures revolve around one person or one tv show because most of the lines dots and spirals coloring books that you can buy are centered on one person like harry styles for instance or they're centered on a band or they're centered on a tv show you can even get like game of thrones ones the walking dead famous landmarks if you do want a bit more choice about what
what to colour in, then maybe look for a book that has a range of spiral pictures inside or a range of line slots and spirals. So maybe because it is focused on landmarks or things like butterflies, I kind of like knowing in advance what it is that I'm actually colouring in, even if I don't know exactly which picture of Harry Styles it's going to turn out to be. And part of the fun of it is kind of like trying to guess in advance what the picture is going to be. And then I sometimes post those on Instagram as well and get other people to like help identify the photo or guess what the photo is. So I think Spiral Betty for creating an outline to colour in is great if you've just got one picture that you want to convert, maybe because you don't want a whole book or you can't find a book on that person or thing that you want to colour in. Now that I know how to use the site, I would be curious to see if I could actually put together like an entire book of my own devising that has just the pictures that I want in it. So that might also be something that I experiment with in future. As I said, sometimes the pictures, even though you've bought a colouring book, sometimes they don't turn out quite the way you expect anyway and it's not that you coloured it in wrong per se it's just that in a book that has you know 50 plus pages some of the pictures are just gonna look better when they're finished than others the other point on that is that gel pens also don't photograph very well or always show up very well on video it's like if they have glitter in them you can't always see the glitter but also you'll find that a picture might look great to the naked human eye and then when you take a photo it just doesn't really look like what it's meant to look like so you have to kind of trust that in reality the picture does look better than it does in a photo or a video it's because it's a, a bit of an illusion going on with the the human eye so in the coloring book that i own there's only a, a couple of pictures where i was a bit disappointed at the end where i think for the spiral they didn't make the spiral dense enough or perhaps the original image that they used was like a, a low resolution image that wasn't great in the first place and shouldn't have really been used but i guess if you're trying to fill a book with like over 50 decent pictures although there's lots and lots of pictures of harry styles around i think for the purposes of this you want a really good clear detailed high resolution image as your start point if possible so that you can get the best results when you're using those adjustments on the spiral betty website i don't usually do voiceover tutorials on this channel i think this is going to be part of a series i usually only do voiceovers on my personal finance channel let me know if any of this was useful i normally make playlists instead with either chill music while i'm coloring or no music or no talking at all sometimes i'll leave the camera sound on so that you get like the asmr coloring sounds and certain gel pens create better sounds for ASMR than others or some of my no music no talking videos are completely muted if you want to colour with me work with me or just relax by watching me colour in total silence but I am going to record more instalments like this the next thing that you'll want to know if you are using the Spiral Betty website to make an outline spirals that you can colour in is how to actually colour that in to get the best results or if you own or buy a lines dots and spirals colouring book or a spiroglyphics book you'll also want to know how to colour those spirals in so make sure to like this and let me know if you want that in the next part